Hi, it's Saturday, September 1st, 2012. This is Edward with SonsOfGod.com. We um, are working on a word right now called Breaking the Time Barrier. It's something that's been in my heart for uh, some time. However, uh, I was driving down the freeway this morning, just mulling over uh, that word, and a short word came uh, as I was driving, uh, a kind of a prelude to um, to the word breaking the time barrier. Um, so I recorded it in the car with the iPhone, and so there's some background noise, so you'll have to kind of just overlook that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play that here in a minute, and then um, we'll uh, We'll let that be kind of a precursor to to the next word, which probably will get posted tomorrow Sunday. Uh, we continue to push forward in this time of uh, really looking to the Lord. I know that Ann and I are, are 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 very much set that we're not going to leave this mode that we're in until the breakthrough happens, until the releases are complete. So we, we send our love and our blessing, and we'll, we'll keep you posted. Thank you. One of the primary points of any word um, that the Lord brings in this respect, uh, breaking the time period, has to do with an impartation that goes within our spirit and our consciousness. It's, it's not that there is something that we specifically must do like, you know, go drink uh, juices, uh, go on an extended fast, or, uh, uh, or, or anything that we do. But it's what we become and assimilate um, that is the, um, the ground zero for everything that evolves forth out of us. So what we're looking for in this whole world of breaking the time barrier is a continued change in our paradigm, a continued change in how we see reality. And that has been the problem since day one. It's always been the word, let go, let go, let go. Get rid of your bonds because they inhibit your ability to see. Because you have everyone else's ideologies and belief systems overlaid over yours. So get rid of the bonds. Um, get rid of your concepts. If you've got some sort of position of what you've done and attained and therefore deserve, get rid of it. You know, the, 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 um, the ground is uh, level at the foot of the cross. So, once again, we're talking about um, how you see reality. And so we're talking about in, in our ability to change has to do with our deep inherent uh, ability to see. An example, many, many, many years ago, we were ministering to a couple. Uh, this is 30, 40 years ago. And I was the commissioned authority, per se, but I didn't really have the perception of what was going on. So I was just kind of like, well, yeah, we bless them, whatnot. There was a young man next to me who was a deacon uh, but had a real gift of perception, and he saw exactly what was going on. He then stepped up, and with a word, dealt exactly with the issue, and it broke. You can say, oh, Edward, you had the authority. Yeah, but I didn't have the insight to see. I didn't know. Um, the other gentleman, of course, had authority. So the point I'm making here is that when there is the insight or the perception, uh, or in this case, a shift of paradigm where you see the truth, then how does the scripture say? The truth sets you free. The truth is not what you read in the scripture. You know, you read John, whatever, 3.16, so on and so forth. You know, that's not what we're talking about. It's not to say that the scriptures aren't truth, but they're not a realized truth until they've become embodied within you, until you've experienced it. And when you've experienced it, it means you've seen it. And then all of a sudden, the truth 
set you free. Otherwise, it's an unrealized potential. So what we're talking about here, once again, not to deviate, is how do we break the time barrier? How do we move into the words that the Holy Spirit is bringing? We do so by virtue of a shift that happens within us, within our paradigm, within our consciousness. All of a sudden, you look, and everything is different. No longer do you see men as trees walking, but you see men. You know, someone might say to you, well, you know, that tree is green. And you look at it, you realize it's not, it's blue. And if you see it for what it is, then you have, then there is that element of, um, it's like light, like a, a igniter of a fuse. It's, it's a, it, you know, the bomb is potential. It's a potential. But how do you light the fuse? You light the fuse when you see the truth, when you discern it for what it is. And then, boom, you have ignition. The same thing with the oppression of the enemy. When you see the lie and the illusion for truly what it is, then it ceases to have authority, power, or dominion over you. Because you realize you are not subject to that. So, every word that we're bringing, everything that we talk about in the book, comes down to one thing, and there must be the impartation, there must be a change of how we see our reality. You know, we've talked about this in the book, classic example. Children, when they're very, very young, in, innately, inherently can see angels. They can see the realm of spirit. Um, but as they grow older, they learn and believe. They take on that which is projected at them from their peers and parents, and they lose that God-given ability. And so you have to go back and learn. That was one of the first words that began to come to us 15 years ago when we left the church world, pastoring and shepherding and whatnot. Even though the churches were very cutting edge, they stopped. They stopped moving forward and began to go backward because you don't, you don't stand still. You're either moving forward or you're going backward. That's just pretty much how it is. But one of the first words that came was you need to unlearn what you've learned. And in the process, or part of the process is letting go. Then you have to unlearn the unbelief, unlearn the limitation. Who says you can't walk through walls? Who says you can't walk on water? Who says you're not one with God? Who says that you have to still reach to attain when God says, I have given you everything pertaining to life and godliness? And you say, well, Lord, yes, you have, but I don't have it yet. No, no, the truth is you do have it. You just don't know it because you're still walking in a learned unbelief and you need to unlearn that because that was never from me that was from the enemy that was from the soul which of course is the enemy's domain and so you unlearn you unlearn you keep unlearning until all of a sudden an aha comes and you realize oh my god I have had this all along Reminds me of a vision I had 14, 15 years ago as we left the churches. I had a elemental spirit appear to me, a kindly old soul. And he says, I know who you are. And I just looked at him and he, and he says, you were as a god over us. And I knew what he was talking about before I came in this present incarnation, before we came on this last step of the journey in sonship. As we were in spirit, we were kings and priests. And so he saw, so he recognized. And this may be something, this is not about me, Edward. It's about all of us, all of his sons, have been brought forth for this time. 